Here we are. Another beautiful day. The sun's just come up. I'm on the river. I've got my uh, four rods in, all dead bits. Let's see what the day brings, shall we? Right, kettle's on the go. Today's cooking with scobes is something I'm new for you. Yes, uh, I haven't seen me cook this yet. So, a little bit of a surprise for you. The sun has just cleared the horizon, so it's right in my face right now. But I can see all four of my rods, and they're all on remote anyway, so anything moves, I hear it anyway. So if you get kicked over, like, suddenly, it's because there's a run and I have to fucking move, like, to flash. You know, don't let this chubby, fat exterior fool you. I'm a fucking coiled spring racing snake. <laughs> Oh, let's get a cup of coffee and let's get uh, set the rest of this camp set up. It's freezing. The van on the way down said it was three and a half degrees, so it's a bit nippy. But I've got base layers and everything on today, so I'm okay. And I'm testing new boots. I uh, bin the the Under Armour dog turd boots. And replaced them with a well, what could be described as a relatively bank balance friendly pair of boots that were like 30 quid. A pair of the Ski Tex Ultralights. Uh, the people that I've talked about, not fishing crowd, not hunting crowd. Guys that work in cold storage for like, uh, you know, big big industrial freezers. It's actually one of my friends. He delivers uh, check in to all the KFCs in Northern Ireland. He works for that company. But when he's in the cold storage room, you know, it is cold. Kind of, you know, crows and chickens. But he wears these boots, and he says all day, he says no, but never a problem. He goes, you just have to, you know, don't wear thick socks with them. Get a pair bigger than you need. So if you're a size 12, get a size 13. You know, for all you freaks that have like small feet, get a state size above it, because they come with like a like a like a heavy duty sock on the inside that you take out. So you take the sock out, put it on first, then slip into the boot. Which is good because they can be washed, which means your your uh, your thermal boots shouldn't smell of dead sheep after a couple of weeks of wearing them. Because let's face it, that's never pleasant. I've also sent off an email to a company that makes custom-made waders in the UK. I've asked for a pair of chest waders that have extra support in the knees and in the ass. Because the waders that I tend to buy, the places that they see, they, they seem to go to rat shit most is the knees. You know, when you're kneeling down to unhook a fish, the knees always seem to bust. You know, you'd expect me being a fat bastard it would bust at the seams, but no, it always busts at the bloody knees. Neoprene's great in the cold weather. You know, it's absolutely brilliant in the cold weather. I would border to say it's almost essential in the cold weather. You know, just to keep your body heat in. But then again, the problem with chest waders very simple. You have to plan your diet before you have a day's fishing with chest bitters on. Because nobody wins when you have a fart at a pair of chest bitters. Nobody wins. It's a bad day. Especially if you're hungover. Mm. Anyway, let's get this coffee on the go. And then I'll run through some rigs. I've had to amend some of the rigs because of the river we're fishing that is carpeted with zebra mussels. So I've had to amend it so some of the main lines are up off of the bottom, but I'll show you all that now in a minute. I'm going to get a cup of coffee first. I got a new bit of kit. I kind of skimmed over it the last day. It's basically it's an ESP bits pouch. It comes with two pouches. One pouch on the front here. Let's slip it open here. It's holding all my pop-ups. Stuff to pop bits up and stuff to make float rigs or sunken float rigs or whatever. In the main pouch of it, it comes with these plastic pouches. Now these are what I store my up traces, my sunken float pat the rigs, and all my bits and pieces, you know, spare spare scissors, tubing, bits and bobs, you know, even down to trolling, even down to some rigs for, for trolling, you know, loads of, loads of different, basically, loads of different rigs. Now, 
you used to get, or I used to have, these are all the traces I make for my sunken float rigs. I just don't know, I'll just open it up here. I could put them into the same same rig that I have my other traces in, and they'd be fine. They'd be perfectly fine. So as you can see, that's it there. It's 12 inches long, two hooks, and at the end you have your your clip that you clip into the uptrace, and this is your bait trace. Putting them in loose means that when you go to take one of them out, you end up taking fucking all of them out. So. I had a little hook, a little hook around my uh, my tackle bag. I used to have a lot of sea fishing equipment, um, but I kind of left. I sold that when I left RAF kind of loss. I didn't, however, get rid of all of it. I kept the little rig spools. These are little foam rig spools from Torx Pro. You can get them. Loads of different companies make these. Basically, it's like a soft foam. But all I have done. It comes with a little pin, you take out the little pin, obviously you don't stick it in your hand, that was fucking retarded, and then you untangle your, you unwrap your, your bait tress that can be clipped on. They did have little labels that you could write like what strength the wire is, but because all the wire strength is the same and I kind of know what it all is, I didn't really put the labels on. Just held in place with a little, a little pin. So you get your end, your little, your end of your rig. Then you just pin it in place, and that holds nice and easy. And they're easy to identify, and they're easy to get hold of. So I did this with all of my up traces or my bait traces from up traces, just to kind of make life a little bit easier. You can I look it on the internet, you can buy a lease from Fladden. It's like three quid for ten. So they're pretty good for storing individual rigs in a bag like this here. But I wouldn't walk around with them in my pocket, you know, you'd end up kinda getting jagged a whole lot. But just something that I picked up that I thought was kinda an easy fix to having to go out and buy another another rig holder. And there you go. Blast them all in a little plastic pouch to swell out of the road. That I can see what I need, I can reach it and get it e relatively easy. It all kind of fits in this little bag. I think it was 12 quid off eBay, but it was one of those auctions that kind of you were, I was kind of lucky to get onto. So, ESP Bits bag, that's pretty good. Although I haven't really been out kicking it around the floor. So, at the minute, I can say that it's, it's all right, it's doing the job. I said to you I've uh, done something different with my rod, so I'm going to show you that now. This is my, this is the big 13 foot 4 pound test rods that I have. The Dave Lum D3s. And they're paired with a big pit bait runner. This is one of the long cast versions. This has a um, 50 pound braid down to a 50 pound, well not down to, to a 50 pound uh, braided snag leader. Snag leader is essential here because of the zebra mussels. It's you can use stuff like Christ and Quicksilver, or you can use stuff like uh, Nash have their own brand, Corda have their own brand, Fox have their own brand. Most tackle companies will have their own sort of brand of of uh, hardened braided leader. Uh, you know because you know zebra mussels are a pain in the tits. Everyone has to deal with them. So I'm going to put this up onto this little strap here. Up onto this little and hope the velcro holds it. There we go. Put the bit runner on. So we have our standard lead link. This is a rotten bottom mono to a five ounce lead. And then we have our our run ring. You see me use these before. These are the Catfish Pro uh, Super Sliders. Really, really good run rings. Then we have our normal rig tubing that protects the last. Two feet of the line that's hit the, so the, the so if two feet of the, anything that's on the bottom, this protects it from the zebra mussels. And then obviously your trace is going to be clipped to this. But above that, we have one of these. It's just a poly ball. It's just a little foam ball. You know, it doesn't really do anything special. But above that, there's a bead. 
and this bead will slide up to the knot where the root where the snag leader joins the where snag leader meets the, the normal reel line. And all that does is that just helps the line stay well off the bottom. You can tighten up as normal, you can cast as normal, it doesn't affect the flight of the cast, it doesn't affect anything. All it does is add a little bit of buoyancy to your main line so the main line is lifted off of the bottom away from any snags. Uh, because it's slightly because it's a biggish board, it'll slide down the, the rig tubing, not a problem. But when you cast it just zips up the line again. So it'll zip up and it's up in this little bead. Little tiny bead. So it'll zip to the knot and come to rest at the knot. And all that does is keep your line off the bottom of the water. So that there's zero muscles on the bottom, they can't get your line. Just a little tip. It might help some of you, but then again, some of you might already be doing this. Of course you can use a bigger poly ball if you want, if you want more buoyancy. I mean you can get, I mean I've used bigger, big, like massive poly balls before, you know, like the size of like an egg. But that's just, so for fishing like somewhere that's like that there, like a real steep angle drop, and you use a bigger poly ball, it gives it more buoyancy to hold it. So the lead will be here, it'll go up to the poly ball and across to your rod. So when the fish picks up the bait and moves, it's still going to move, it's still going to pull the drop arm, it doesn't affect your bait indication. It just keeps your line away from the snags, away from the mess. So, there you go, top tip of the day. A little poly ball on your line to a stop knot will uh, save your mono or your braid or whatever you're using from the, uh, the cursed zebra mussels. Welcome to another episode of Cooking with Scobes. Today we are cooking squared sausage and we're going to have it on bagels. Something different. I don't mean to wave a knife at you like I'm trying to, you know, put the feet, put the shits up you. So first of all, we're going to toast the bagels. We're going to have to cut them in half to make them edible. This is where I usually end up friggin' slicing my fingers in front of the camera and going, "Oh shit, it has happened again." Deep in concentration face, trying not to cut fingers. There we go. This one kind of got squished, so this is going to be extra good to kind of try and slice in half. So what we're going to do is we're going to toast these. I'm not going to put any oil into the frying pan, I'm just going to toast them and then I'm going to put the little bit of oil in and the squared sausage. Squared sausage is awesome and before I get any complaints from the Scottish heathens, squared sausage is available here in Northern Ireland. Don't give me that pish that it's, oh it's only Scotland, when you get it in Scotland, it's only good food if it comes from Scotland. I guarantee you do the taste test, this stuff would be easily, easily better than that uh, second rate Lauren sausage you guys have over in Jokanese land. Happily put a bet in it. Just imagine the comment section now, I'm going to have loads of hairy jocks go <laughs> Just kidding Scottish people, I love you. A few moments later. I've toasted my bagels put my oil in the pan, just a little bit of oil, not, not a whole, not a terrible amount of oil. And now it's time for the squared sausage. I've already pre-sliced it, so it should be relatively easy. There you go, lovely. Put all this rubbish away. Always take your rubbish home with you. Oi, oi, oi. There you have it. The finest of the finest. Square sausage. That's them cooked. They don't take very long. I 
Very good. Oh, lovely. And then you just need some sauce. This is the last of my Kansas barbecue. Gonna have to go and buy more of it. And there you have it. Squared sausage and bagels for breakfast. One eternity later. Ah, still a blank. I thought I had something on the half mackerel. The drop arm would kind of give a little tink like that, then nothing. I don't know what's going on with it. I've had a couple of boats trying to get past under the bridge, but because the water's that high, the boats can't fit. So cue cake and arse party where they have to turn around in the middle of right in front of me and then head back down the river again. Yeah, dip shit in the boat. Realises that he can't fit under the bridge. So now he's going to have to reverse. Gotta love boat people. Always good when you have boats that are driven by retards. We seem to have our fair share of them in Fermanagh. Yeah. What else is new? We still have the COVID. It's still uh it's still weird, doesn't it? We're all gonna get lined up and inoculated against it. They're going to uh bring in the military apparently to uh help in the the mass inoculation of the public. So they're going to inoculate us against a disease that has a survivability of 98 something percent. The only people that will suffer from COVID are the really elderly or the people that have a, a very damaged immune system. The rest of us have to suffer. It's a bit strange, but a vaccine. So we're going to get a vaccine. That's going to be nice. I think I'm going to hang back. I don't think I'm going to be uh, front of the queue rushing to get it. I'm going to wait and see just how safe it is before I get any sort of inoculation. That part of me that was in the military for a long time still remembers getting the anthrax injections. That beat the absolute shit out of you. That part of me that's military minded still remembers the uh, to give malaria medicine to the British forces that basically caused depression and give you an urge to kill yourself. So I'm just a little bit concerned, a little bit cautious about what I stick in my body. BBC Sports Personality of the Year has proved itself to be a uh, a bit of a joke again. We have a guy on Northern Ireland, Jonathan Ray, who's won the Superbike World Championships six times. This is something that's never been done before. Didn't even make the shortlist for a Sports Personality of the Year, but you can uh, you can bet your bottom dollar the uh, the terminally woke offended. obnoxious puke of a human being that is Lewis Hamilton, he'll be on it. He'll even win it. Because he's on his knees telling everybody that he's oppressed because he's a black man. Still crack up when I written and listen to this clown. He says that he grew up in the slums when the house he grew up in was like worth a ha like 1.5 million. Grew up in the slums, had it rough, poor lad. Sometimes I think we live in clown world. Seen another article in the news where uh, a group designed 
a medical group designed for women who are having problems uh, breastfeeding their children like a support group for these women that are having problems breastfeeding their kids a support group where they could go to it and like get help and be shown like how best to do it so that they could breastfeed their kids they bowed down to the the transgender mafia <laughs> and they have let biological men into the group because biological men can lactate and can breastfeed you know normally I would say we live in cloud world but this week we had a little bit of uh, common sense prevailed a wee bit we had a judge in the UK turn around and say that you can't give puberty blockers experimental drugs that haven't been tested you can't give them to anyone under the age of 18 which is which is good you know under the age of 18 you can't have a pint you can't smoke a cigarette but you can choose your gender pull the other one so at least they've kind of turned around and says that after the age of 18 you can do whatever you want to your body but under the age of 18 you cannot consent I firmly believe in the next 10 to 20 years we're going to see doctors and uh, you know mental health experts experts that encourage this lunacy we're going to see them kind of uh, up against the courts It's going to be up there like with the medical crimes of the history like lobotomizing human beings you know 20 years time people are going to look back and go wait a minute you experimented on children because of what it's great isn't it can't say anything against them because you'll be labeled as uh phobic can't speak out can't say your piece can't you know say anything because it's 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 a hate crime I've been banned from Twitter for hate criming all I did was question the lockdown all I did was question a COVID-19 lockdown and I got permanently banned from YouTube for hate speeching didn't swear didn't call anyone a cunt didn't even take the piss asked the question boom can't have asking questions so I joined parlor instead and I know everyone will joke and oh parlor's a site for you know everyone on the right I don't know I kind of see myself politically in the middle which is weird and I know it's a fishing channel and I don't really like talking about politics but it's kind of weird you know it seems to be that this day and age where you disagree with certain people you get called like Hitler which is odd you know I grew up in an environment where you could have a discussion you could freely state your piece people could agree or people could disagree you didn't scream insults at them you didn't tantrum and cry you didn't phone their place of employment and try to get them sacked you didn't mass you know bombard their social media platforms you know trying to get them banned off social media you just accepted that it's a different perspective a different point of view you disagreed with it disagreeing with somebody is okay you can disagree with people you know, just because you disagree with somebody you know you don't have to they're, they're not your enemy they're just a human being but another news the new boots that I'm wearing the ski techs ultra light thermal boots they are still feet are toasty warm initial thoughts it was 30 pound well spent 
So that's the result. What to put on next? So, we're getting to the point where we're getting really, really sustained periods of cold. Cold weather it slows the fish down a little bit. And it brings into the uh, the dead bits, you know, they'll, they'll still work, they'll still catch on dead bits, they'll still catch on lures, but live bits come into their own in the winter, at least I've always found that they've come into their own in the middle of winter, which makes me butt heads with the rules and regulations here in Northern Ireland, as we're not allowed to fish with live bit. Getting caught fishing with live bit is illegal. Let that be a lesson to you all. Getting caught is illegal. I'm not encouraging anyone to, to do it. I'm just saying that in really cold weather, live bits tend to be the way forward. Don't break the law. Oh, and while I'm on here having a chat with you, uh, I've put a link in the description for one of my friends. It's a guy called Alex Kearney. Good guy. He started up a YouTube channel. Now, Alex is one of those characters that lives life, you know, very full. If Alex has an idea, like, let's have a business idea to start up a fishery here, he'll go away and do it. You know, he'll go away and actually do it. He has the vision to go and do something as opposed to being a dreamer and sitting on his ass and not doing anything. He's a good guy. He He's a former Royal Marine Commando. Lives on the west coast of Scotland. He runs the... Uh, the Herlaw fishery in Scotland. It's only a matter of time before this fishery starts throwing up 40 pounders. Because it is well run, beautiful place. If the Covid pisses off sometime in the new year, I'm going to see about getting across to fish in Scotland. I'd maybe hook up with a couple of days and fish with Alex for a bit. His channel isn't all, his channel isn't about fishing, it's about everything from day to day life, mental health awareness, uh, he's big into his bike, his cycling. So I would appreciate it if you go across and give him a a wee subscription, have a wee, have a wee shot at his channel. He's only starting off, so you know, he's only starting off. But I think he's a good guy, I have a lot of time for him. Just then. And we're in. Right, let's get him in the net. Not a blank! Uh, it might be a double. This was on the the pollen.
and of course he's tangled up in the net. Right, so let's get this out of here. Let's get that out of there. Find it where the second hook is. Oh well, just in there. Okay, come on, chill out, chill out. Chill out. I just want to take a photograph of you. Yes, a photograph. Come on, chill. Chill! <laughs> Fucking tag me. It's okay. It's, it's okay, dude. It's okay. Right, come on. Right, let's get it put back in. This is the good thing about the unhooking cradle. He can have a wee bit of a thrash as much as he wants, but he is not going to do himself any damage. There you go. Well, it's not a blank. That fish there, you know, low double, scrapper double. Better than catching nothing all day. That one took a pollen, and I swear it did more fight than the unhooking cradle than it did in the water. That's the beauty with the unhooking cradles. They can thrash about as much as they want. There's no physical way they're going to hurt themselves. You know, the unhooking cradle, they're deep down into it. The nice slick cover, nice slick material. I do believe that the unhooking cradles are the next, the uh, the next progression in the uh, unhooking, in the unhooking way of we, in the way we unhook our pike. That was a bit of a mouthful, wasn't it? We're coming up to dusk now. We've been here from sunrise and we're going to be here to sunset. The sun is going to set over there. We're not going to see it because it's behind that hill. But I'm going to fish until it's dark and then take a wee slow drive home. The wife is making chicken curry. Wife makes good curry. So I think I'm going to go home and have a, a nice chicken curry and a few beers. Might even have a whiskey. Push the boat out and all, you know. But I'll go home and edit this video. I did do another session uh, midweek here on the upper lock and it was blank. Started off beautiful, you know, then the weather just turned and it was a case of throw everything in the van and get the hell out of there. Didn't have a run, didn't see a fish and the weather just turned like that and I just had to get out of there so there wasn't really much to say there wasn't really much to speak about on that vlog so I never really I'm not gonna bother showing it to there's no point showing foot showing the like half an hour's footage of like rain I'm trying to move away from that in the vlogs so here we have today on the river it's been pretty well one fish they're hardly crawling up the line, but we have had a week of solid, like good solid, low, low temperatures, like you know, getting down towards the minus figures. We did have snow there during the week, so I think it's a fair assumption that uh, winter is upon us. 
we just have to the reason I like winter so much I like it when it's really really brutally cold because it puts people off coming fishing that may sound selfish uh, but if it's really really cold you know ice on the ground hard to fish brutally cold I love that to me that's perfect weather conditions to go and fish you know obviously I'm not going to do stuff that's possibly going to endanger myself like drive on black ice but I do like it when it's really really cold and really really harsh this is why I've this is why I, I was so disappointed with the Under Armour boots because they advertised that they were like good down to like minus whatever 20 or 30 or whatever it was and they were shit just a pure dog turd you know like the way that the rods are spaced out here you know I have two rods up there towards the bridge and two rods on the pod here to walk to my two other rods towards the bridge the grass isn't you know um, sodden you know it's, it's just a bit muddy but in the Under Armour boots I guarantee you my feet would be absolutely froze by now because I'd have to walk across wet grass that's just crap you know absolute crap and to spend the money I spent on them really disappointed and what's worse is I'm disappointed with the response from Under Armour you know but you can complain that these things are a learning experience these things are a definite learning experience we'll just know that when it comes to buying uh, footwear we'll avoid any sort of thermal footwear from uh, Under Armour people have suggested muck boots you know I do I did buy a pair of muck boots for my wife and she thinks they're brilliant you know she takes them when she's walking the dog you know she really really rates them but I've had muck boots before and I had different problems with them the thing I found with them was my calves are a bit you know big but big calves you know I think that's a, that's a throwback from all the rugby I played I couldn't get the boots it was like elastic bands around the bottom of my legs and it was uncomfortable so I'd like a pair of, of boots that you know accommodate a big thigh not a big thigh a big calf let's just get to that nice quiet point now the weather seems to have calmed down a little bit it doesn't look like we're getting rain it doesn't look like we're getting too much more wind it's just nice the river is flat calm I'm, like, I'm hoping that there could be more runs towards night time we'll fish until dark and then we'll take a slow drive home let's keep those fingers crossed we might have another one guess what didn't happen no more runs so that was it I called time and drove home I have had a absolutely top end chicken curry really good I have taught the wife how to cook really well and if she watches this vlog she will kill me however while I'm here I want to show you these boots a little the newer ones they got this, the E-Tex ones this is them just a normal 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 valley boot kind of a like a soft foam welly boot but they have these socks so when you go to put them on you put your obviously you put your socks on your normal socks on your feet then you slip these on like a pair of over socks and then you slide the whole thing into the boot and the first day out they were actually quite comfortable they're a little bit noisy after the day of wearing them you kind of get a like if you're walking a bit you hear like a squeak but I'm thinking that's because the sole is uh, rubbing on the the bottom of the boot like I say first day wearing them and they kept my feet dry they kept my feet warm you know I feel like I'm 
setting the bar very low here when I'm asking a set of uh, thermal wellingtons to keep my feet dry and keep my feet warm but so far these are doing the uh, everything that they say on the tin which is good I want to also say that to everyone that's recently liked and subscribed and left comments and all the usual sort of YouTube stuff I appreciate everyone that's subscribing uh, the channels just went over the two and a half thousand subscriber mark so that's awesome that's amazing I'm working on merch for the channel I've got someone lined up to sort of do beanies with uh, the channel logo you know the the channel logo I've also got some new stickers in the pipe well they're, they're like this is well this is the bigger one let me show you what the the first batch of stickers but these ones that was the first batch then uh, if it likes the channel reached out to me and sent me some uh, some bigger ones and some huge ones now these ones will be available in the new year and the these ones here these will be available in the new year as well you can still get these ones but if you want the bigger ones then hold off to the new year i put up on this on the facebook page that they're ready to go at the minute it's it's coming up to Christmas, so sending anything out via the post is just going to be a nightmare. So I'm going to wait till everything calms down after Christmas, and then we'll get everything sorted out. I have to buy uh, post tubes for the very big boat stickers. Um, they have to get hard-backed envelopes for the for these ones because they're they need a hard-backed envelope. They just can't be sent a normal envelope. But apart from that, it was a good day. Apart from having a slight gash on my pinky finger, <laughs> I want to say thank you to again all my subscribers, everyone that's liking and sharing and subscribing, leaving thumbs up. Awesome, you guys are awesome. If you haven't thought about subscribing yet, then give it a wee thought. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything. You don't get bombarded by emails, you just subscribe to the channel, and when you go onto your subscriptions page on YouTube, Hopefully you'll see my fat face and you'll see, oh look I have a new, a new video out so you can enjoy that and send the appropriate level of abuse. So, thanks to everyone that's watching. I hope you're all having a good time. I hope you're all staying safe. Until the next time, tight lines. <laughs>